Hello everyone, how are you doing today? Uh, I'm doing a second video today because I had kind of an epiphany when I was making the first one, and I really think you're going to like this line of thinking. So listen to what I'm thinking here. I don't understand why Richard Allen did not try to destroy or throw away his weapon. I mean, think about this logically. At the 2019 press conference, Doug Carter states very, very specifically that they were looking for the driver of the vehicle who was parked at the old welfare building. He knows that he parked at that welfare building by his own admission that day, yet he doesn't come forward. So he had to have known, Richard Allen had to have known if he watched that press conference, and you better believe he did, he had to have known that officers wanted to talk to him and were looking for him and were trying to identify the person at that building. But maybe it's because the sketch didn't look like him. Maybe he figured, well, they're still, it's two years later, they're never going to identify that it was me there. Uh, who knows what he thought. But at that point, based on the fact that he's seen his video, you know, he, then they talk about the, the driver of the car at the welfare building. Richard Allen had to have known at that point that he was the suspect they were looking for. So why didn't he ditch his gun at that point? Is it because he didn't know that he left an unspent bullet? Because certainly if I were there and did that and knew I left a spent shell casing, uh, it, it's interesting, because if you read the probable cause arrest warrant affidavit, it says, on October 13th, 2022, investigators executed a search warrant of Richard Allen's residence uh, in Delphi, Indiana. Among other items, officers located jackets. Was it the same jacket he was wearing? Did they find forensics on that? Boots. Um, did they have footprints that match that? knives and firearms, including a Sig Sauer model P226 40 caliber pistol with serial number U625627. Between October 14th and 19th, 2022, the Indiana State Police Laboratory performed an analysis on Allen's Sig Sauer model P226. The laboratory performed a physical examination and classification of the weapon function test, barrel and overall length measurement, test firing, ammunition component characterization, microscopic comparison, and NIBIN. Now, what is NIBIN, you ask? NIBN is a program operated by the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms, the ATF, in which Firearms examiners at state and local crime laboratories compare tool marks on spent cartridges or bullets found at a crime scene to digitized images of ballistic evidence in the database. So they already have a massive, massive database, everybody. Okay? They have a massive database of this similar caliber fired from numerous, every different type of weapon you can imagine they keep a massive database of this and they compare it against all of the other spent rounds or unspent rounds that they have on file for that same caliber weapon and the same weapon they're trying to compare it to in this case again the sig sauer model p226 the laboratory determined the unspent round located within two feet of victim two's body had been cycled through Richard Allen's Sig Sauer model P226. The laboratory remarked, an identification opinion is reached when the evidence exhibits an agreement of class characteristics of, and a sufficient agreement of individual marks. So that all matched up. Sufficient agreement is related to the significant duplication of random striated impression marks as evidenced by the correspondence of a pattern or combination of patterns, plural, of surface contours. The interpretation of identification is subjective in nature. They admit that. But if that subjective evidence is convincing 
and you can show them, hey, we have 60,000 other similar markings in our database, and this is the only one, only one that repeatedly matches Allen's weapon over and over, that's some pretty darn good evidence. So I understand now more that I've studied what NIBIN is, just how much time and effort the ATF has put into creating this database for this very type of scenario, for this very type of situation, showing once again that law enforcement, whether you admit it or not, is always, always one step, or maybe even five to ten steps ahead of you and me most of the time. So let's give law enforcement some credit here, because they just didn't pull this out of their hat on some whim. And again, it begs the question, why in the world, after he saw the 2019 press conference, knowing that they were trying to look for him since he parked there, why, why did he just keep his weapon in his house? I mean, did, did he think that they weren't going to identify him eventually somehow? Or, uh, I mean, you would think that at that point, at the very least, he would have just said, I'm chucking this weapon. And... <laughs> You know, we can't say that's what they were looking for in the Wabash River search, obviously, because the warrant here shows that they found the weapon that matched actually still in his house. So he wasn't wise enough to try and get rid of his weapon, and I, I'm just kind of shocked that he just held on to it. It kind of doesn't make sense to me. It's kind of, kind of bizarre. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you liked this video, please hit the thumbs up button because uh, I appreciate all of your support. And uh, I spend a lot of time studying this case every time I make a video so that I can kind of give you something a little different. Uh, I, I critically think about these cases in a little bit of a different way than most people do, just kind of because of my background and um, things of that nature. Thanks for watching, everybody.